Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Tito Butt Doctor, and I grew up in places that look a lot like what I'm showing you here. We didn't have much money. The place was kind of falling apart, and we didn't have the money or the time to fix it. They had bad paint jobs, broken molding, broken trim, terrible carpets, terrible floors, terrible lighting. You get close to the holidays, and you're just not sure what to do. You're embarrassed to have people over, and you know that fixing the place and painting it would do wonders. But if you had the money and time to fix it and to paint it, you wouldn't have this problem in the first place. So how can we make a place that looks like this look decorative and warmer and more inviting and less embarrassing? Fortunately, I've got some cheat codes, a little bit of tips and tricks here to kind of hide the sore spots. Now, full disclosure, I spent about $300 of my own money to do what you're about to see. However, we can easily make these same changes by going to friends and family and finding hand-me-down little pieces, old curtains that your friends and family aren't using anymore. We can take little end tables and things out of a bedroom and utilize them in the living room and kitchen. I'll get to all that here in just a bit, but step one is getting all the trash picked up and everything moved out of the room as best you can so that we can start this thing from scratch. We're going to do a move out, move in cleaning. What I mean by that is we're going to move everything out as if we're like legitimately moving out of the place. Now that doesn't mean you have to take it all out and you know into the front yard or anything like remove all the furniture and all that stuff but we do need to get it out of the way so that we can clean under it and around it so what i'm doing is i'm taking the majority of what these people have and putting it in the kitchen and then things that are too big to go in the kitchen like say the couch i'm just going to move that away from the wall as far as i can move it so i can clean under it then once we've done all that we're going to put everything back as if we're just moving into this place for the first time. Because when you first move into an apartment or a house, you're dealing with a blank slate and that is likely the cleanest your house is ever going to feel again. So by doing a move out, move in cleaning, we're recreating that from scratch. Now, if you have trouble recreating that experience just by moving furniture, what you could do is get evicted from your current apartment and that way you're forced into a move out, move in cleaning. But that to me seems like a, a bit of an extreme measure to take in order to just get your house clean. So we're just going to simulate that here. The very first problem that they have in this living room is that their TV and their TV stand is on one side of the room blocking a vent. Their couch is on the other side of the room blocking the other vent. So not only are they putting a massive amount of space between their couch and their TV, but they're also making it harder to heat and cool the house. Now this living room is small enough to where one vent can handle that. So we're going to utilize that and we're going to move the TV TV and TV stand across the room where the couch currently is. Then we're going to use the couch to divide the room in half and make part of the living room like an entertainment center. I will go into more detail about why that matters here in just a few minutes, but when you see the result, it'll actually make the room look bigger overall. Not so much in the after shots that I show you, but in real life, the room looks bigger and it looks fancier. By the way, the after shots in both these rooms that we're doing, the kitchen and the living room will blow your mind. They are extremely large transformations. The other problem this living room has is that there's no lighting. This was a group of houses that were built in my area that for whatever reason they installed ceiling fans in all of them but they didn't install ceiling fans that had lights on it. I hate that so much because it, it makes you rely on floor lamps and end table lamps and if you don't have those the room gets extremely depressing because it's always dark. So the very first thing that I bought or the first three things that I bought was a floor lamp and two end table lamps because just adding some light to this room not only will change the looks of the room but it'll change the mood of the room as well. It's just like switching from depressing music to upbeat pop music. It instantly changes your mood and you can feel a difference and I think this couple definitely needs that boost in mood because staying in this living room as it was was so depressing that it created a cycle where the depression caused lack of motivation and then the buildup of trash that resulted from lack of motivation increased the depression. So you get on this vicious cycle where things just keep piling up and piling up and your mood keeps getting worse and worse. So we're going to break that cycle by kind of uh, improving the lighting 
and improving the overall feel and look of these two rooms. I think I got the lights for about 40 bucks and then I bought 100 watt soft white bulbs because even the types of bulbs that you use can change the whole look of a room. So we wanted bright light, but we didn't want hard blue daylight type lights. Another thing I bought that wasn't totally necessary, but I found the exact same computer desk that he's using, and I'm putting computer desk in sarcastic quotes. It's just a regular old like end table. But I found, yeah, I found that for 30 bucks, so I went ahead and got it because the one that he had was falling apart. You could literally just push it over because the legs were barely connected. Now, once I get the front half of this room vacuumed, I'm gonna pull the TV and the stand to where the couch used to be. Now, you'll notice that I'm gonna be covering a vent with this but again since this room is small enough to be powered by one vent it should work out just fine because there's a stand that I'm going to put where that TV used to be that is elevated up over the vent to where it can still work and we happen to find a vent redirector like a flow redirector that just it's a little piece of plastic with magnets on it you put it over the vent and it redirects the airflow to come out rather than up so I just put that thing on there and it was like suck it vent you want to go up up, but you can now you got to go out i do got to go out thank you for putting the flow on me shut up talking vent one of the advantages to doing a move out move in cleaning is that once you get the floors done and you move on to redecorating the room everything that you put back in place tv stands tvs computer desk end tables you can clean those off one at a time as you put them back and you know you're not forgetting anything so by the time you're done redecorating the whole room literally everything in that room is clean top to bottom and it doesn't take much you can just wipe it off or dust it off but it ensures that everything in that room is clean and you can feel it when you get it done now again I bought a couple more things for this room but you don't have to do that I only did it because I wanted to help and they had some broken furniture so we replaced this kind of black bookshelf sort of thing with a white one that I found at a thrift store for like 15 bucks and instead Instead of using that as a bookshelf, I used it to store all their shoes. So we, we used it as a makeshift shoe rack and that got the shoes off the floor and onto a decorative space. We could have reused the bookshelf for the same purpose. So there could have been no money spent there. I also bought a glass and metal kind of a wall table. And again, that did not have to be bought at all. If you're in this situation, don't think you gotta go out and buy a bunch of new furniture. Cause again, this, this video is about what do you do if you're broke? Well, if you're broke, you can't go out and drop 300 bucks on furniture, that's stupid. You can utilize what you have to get the same basic idea as what I'm doing here. Move everything out, clean it, and then redecorate it in a way that hides the worst spots of the, the house, the worst spots of the floor, the worst spots of the windows. If you've got a wall with a big stain or a hole in it, we can put the TV in front of that so that it's hidden from view. The things we did need to get, and you can get these from friends and family because usually somebody's got a bunch of old curtains that they replaced, then they just fold it up and put it in a box somewhere, and they're still good. They just wanted to change their style. I know a ton of people who have old curtains laying around that are still perfectly good, but we need curtains. Since we don't have the money and the time to replace molding and trim, what we can do is utilize curtains to hide the fact that there's missing trim in the first place. In the kitchen, we have some missing cabinet doors. We're going to use curtains for those too. Yes, I know it feels very bachelor and it feels very college dormy, but I live in a town that is full of people who can't afford to go out and get new cabinet doors and they're having to make do with whatever they have at hand and a set of free curtains from your mom or a set of four dollar curtains from Dollar General is way less expensive than replacing five cabinet doors. So back to why I divided the room by putting the couch in the middle of the room instead of against a wall. In this relationship the guy plays a lot of computer games and the woman watches TV and reads on the couch. 
lounge. If we made a section of the living room that contains both him and her within eyesight, you're creating less of an isolation between them and you're not looking across the room at the TV. We're making a section of the living room and its sole purpose is entertainment. Meanwhile, behind the couch, we're opening up a large area that has nothing between the entrance door and the kitchen. So when you walk into the house, there's a straight shot from the front door to the kitchen and you don't have to walk around anything. You don't have to walk in front of somebody. You don't have to break their line of sight to the TV. And from the entrance door, when you walk into it and look through the living room, it looks way bigger because you're entering an open area now rather than walking through someone else's area. So going back to the windows, we're using two different types of curtains here. I'm using 83 inch curtains and I'm hanging the rod as high as I can hang it above the actual windows. We're going to use two to four dark curtains on the very ends, bookending the whole window so that those can cover up the fact that there's no trim on them. You can't see through the curtains so you can't see that there's no window trim there. Then we're going to use sheer curtains in the middle to continue hiding that while still allowing light to flow through it. If if you just get a set of blackout curtains, it's too much. It makes the whole living room dark. It perpetuates depression and it makes the whole place feel like a dungeon. If you're a guest going into that house, it's very uninviting to walk into a really dark place. So we're doing this to cover up the window while still allowing sunlight to get through to make it feel more homey. Don't forget when you're putting things back to take the cushions off the couch, open up every door to every cabinet, open up every drawer to every desk. We're going to clean all that. It really doesn't take that long to do. But like when we pulled up the couch cushions, there was a whole garbage bag full of just trash underneath the cushions. Once we vacuumed that out and threw away all the, the garbage, any weird smell that was in that house starts to dissipate within the hour.
The kitchen looks overwhelming at first, but if you think about this in just like three steps, it makes it so much easier to deal with. One, you're going to get rid of all the trash. Two, while you're getting rid of trash, you're going to put away anything that can be put away in pantries or whatever. Then three, you're going to clean surfaces. That's really all a kitchen is. I mean, most kitchens have got a bunch of dishes to do. This one fortunately didn't. So when we did this one, instead of saying we're going to do that to the whole kitchen, I always break my stuff down into smaller sections. So we're going to do what I just described just to the kitchen table. Now this table sucked harder than anything that has ever sucked. It was like mega suck, mega giga suck. So we took it outside and let it just continue to suck in the garage. I can fix that table and repaint it and make it look really nice. I may do that at some point for them. But for right now, it was too wobbly. It was not functional. They were like, just get rid of it, which allowed us to open up the kitchen a lot more. Because at this point, that, that table, its only function was to put things on when they came home instead of putting things away. That's why it's in this bad of a condition. So after we're done doing that to the table, then we just repeat the process on all the counters. Now, outside of the curtains that I bought for this room, the only other thing I purchased was a small pantry type of cabinet. I spent 25 bucks on it. I actually bought two of them, but one of them broke on transport, so we ended up using just this one. You don't need it. So if you're broke, don't go out and try to drop money you don't have on things you don't need. We could have easily just used the pantry. I just happened to know that once we took that table out, we needed something against the wall to make it look fuller than what it actually was. Plus, it never hurts to have more storage. So we got that, put it against the wall, and then we stocked it with canned goods and bread, things that they use a lot. And that just having food on that in a nice organized manner made the kitchen look a lot more inviting and a lot more useful. I also stocked it with a moose face, canned moose face. You can buy that here in Illinois. It's processed, so it's not as good as like like if you buy an actual moose face or you hunt your own moose face, but canned moose face is still pretty good. The curtains that I used for this room were used for very specific purposes. We wanted one set of black curtains to go over the pantry, which had no door. And we only did that because the cabinets were black. I mean, the whole kitchen needs gutted and replaced. But for right now, curtains will do the job. We used a set of white curtains over the kitchen window. Then we used a set of 36 inch black curtains to cover up three cabinet doors that were gone. Those were a little bit too long, but they looked way better than having nothing there to begin with. Then there are three transition windows that separate the living room from the kitchen and the paint job is horrible on that. So we're just using curtains to add some decoration to the wall and to cover up the bad paint job while still being sheer enough to see that there are windows between those two rooms. I used 63 inch curtains and I hung the rod up high enough to where the curtains wouldn't drag the floor. In all, I spent roughly about $300 on curtains, curtain rods, and a few pieces of furniture that I found at a thrift store. I could have done all of this for free, especially if I would have gotten donated hand-me-down curtains. So if you're in a situation where you don't have money and you don't have the time, you're, you're going to have to come up with the time in order to do this kind of work. I did this entire living room in about two hours by myself. And then with help, I was able to finish some detail work on the living room in about 30 minutes and the entire kitchen in about an hour. But the idea of this video is to take the principle from it. We're going to cover up the worst, ugliest spots with something pretty. We're also going to clean everything. We're going to design the room's use for a purpose. So the kitchen shouldn't be just a room to store your food. Its purpose is to store food, cook, make your coffee. It's a room to spend part of your life in, so it should be inviting. In the living room, we're going to try to improve the lighting, even if that just means using sheer curtains to let in more sunlight. We're going to utilize our furniture to cover up the ugly 
usually a spots in the room and we're going to design it in a way that is symmetrical, open and inviting to guests. So don't just lay it out in a way that best suits you. Lay it out in a way that best suits you and potential company. So in other words, if company comes over, do you have room to watch movies? Do you have the right layout to where you can practice pro wrestling moves on each other without knocking over lamps? If you want to show your company the new sweet spin kick that you just learned how to do, do you have a spin kick section of the living room in order to perform it? More importantly, can your living room even handle that? Anyway, we opened up the Facebook page that I normally use for business into an actual Facebook page for people. I will link that in the description below because there have been a lot of fake Facebook accounts just ripping off my channel. So I might as well go ahead and start one so you know which one's real. I mean, these weren't small channels. There was one dude who got like 240,000 followers. Another dude got 100,000 followers just stealing my work. So I'm going to link the actual real Facebook page in the description and you can find it on my channel's main description as well. Members, I will see you on Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. Later. What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay.